Oh my goodness. I have happily named this box the Box of Frustration. Because if you can't tell by my voice, I was a little frustrated, but I got it. Uh, it's part of life. So, there it is, pulsing away via the fiber optics, via the controller over there for the moment. Why would I call this a box of frustrations? So well, I got the I.O. digital inputs via optical, alright, and I've got power. And then these connectors, for some reason, don't quite fit in there, right? That's okay, they'll still plug in. So why is this a box of frustration? Well, you know, I do this to myself a lot. I do something, like make a box, and then realize I just don't have enough room. And, uh, well, here's what I mean. Yeah. If I had to fix that circuit board, which I really hope I never have to touch, let's just say I'm going to print me a bigger box. So I mounted that little optical box inside here, just glued it in there. And, uh, got ferrite beads on a lot of the connectors so that any pulse coming in should be alright. I added all those extra caps in there and filter and diodes and zener diodes and all this protection. And so I'm going to shield the, uh, cables coming out. I could have used some coax cables after I th thought about it, but I don't really have all the stuff I need. I got connector ends, actually, so maybe next time. If I make another one of these, I'll, I'll just go ahead and put coaxial cables on there to keep the shielding the best I can, but really I need uh, a different method. But anyway, enough chitter-chatter and talking. We're going to aluminum foil the box lid and uh, put that back together and be finished with that. Now we can actually move on to testing a few things. I'm going to test with no magnet first and then I'll get back to uh, testing with the magnet once we get everything else done because I put an optical encoder on there so that'll also be optically isolated. Alright, moving on. Here is the relay circuit currently. I'm only using three outputs of the four. I put an extra in there in case I wanted to use it. I'm sure I will. So right now, we basically have interlocks, so safety interlocks. So I can always short the coil, um, but if I short the coil, it disengages one of these two because this contact is connected to the same bank as the short coil or the short uh, section or section 3 output. And then these two flip power, so this is like positive polarity and negative polarity connected right to the coil. Um, and the reason for this, of course, is so that I don't accidentally turn on the battery bank and short it out. So I can't short the coil if these two are on, and if I try, these two disconnect. And if these two try to turn on, this one has to be off, and these can't be turned on because either one of those disable either one of those. So simple relay circuit safety, and then I've got this basically fuse. This small wire is my fuse. So if I do short the batteries, most likely it'll just burn this little wire up. So anyway, that's how I got it connected. Hi Malachi. Yes. Do you like my box? Yeah. <laughs> it's pulsing. Yeah. What do you think about that? Yeah, all right. Is that, is that exciting? Yeah. Look at it. Got the opto-isolated cables coming in here. The stick in the box. And then we got the uh, power, which I have to shield. Put a ferrite bead on the outside of that guy, too. And then I'll put ferrite beads on the outside of these. And yeah, box of frustration. Complete. Off to the next stage. You ready to do the next stage? Yeah. You're hilarious. Okay, come sit back down. Come sit back down. Such a good listener. Thank you. Is that good? Okay. All right, the tests are about to commence. Commence? Commence? Whatever I said. They're about to start. Relays are working. I've only got four outputs connected right now. I'll turn the other one off. Yeah, it's funny. The sound 
and the lights sound delayed. Oh, it's because they're inverted. That's why. <laughs> they are delayed. The light... Oh, that's weird. Anyway, I'm going to use this relay bank to start with. I do have other relays I want to try along the way, but right now, these are the ones that are ready to rock and roll. I'm not doing any shorting. I need a big contactor relay for that or some other means of many um, relays that I don't really have set up right now, but I do have the short relay here. So, anyway, on to the testing. But it is all functional and working. Uh, currently, I've got the cables routed behind here and my messy desk over here temporarily I'll build a box for that and shield it sometime soon but for now I want to just see if we can get it to work and uh, everything's working opto isolated so sweet it's a funny looking box isn't it it works all right we're connected to 12 volts connected to our relay bank Connected to our coil with some new high voltage wire. And we're connected over here to the scope. We're set at 100, 100. So I'm going to start it. You can hear it clicking away. And it's doing its thing. So if we want to get a quick look at that. Nice big ring on there, peak to peak value, 1.5, 1.4. That's a big ring for 40 volts input. All right, success on this project as far as uh, what we were trying to achieve. Now it's time to get busy. Now we got full control, full power, and we're gonna do some fun stuff with that. So we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Bye.